Hi, I'm Cliff Burt. Uh, I'm here at Copper Mountain uh, Medical Clinic at the uh, Copper Mountain Ski Resort in Colorado. And today we're going to be talking about the uh, uh, knee exam with a uh, mnemonic format. Uh, just an FYI, this is not a complete knee exam. There are plenty of great videos on YouTube for that, but I just wanted to give you guys some pointers on how to remember uh, some of the important points. So the next test is the Lockman's test, which uh, I like to think of the as the lock. man's test because what this does is uh, it tests for the ACL as you can see here ACL the anterior cruciate ligament which helps to lock the knee in place I also like to think of it as the Loch Ness test or Loch Ness as it uh, when it's positive, it's sort of like the Loch Ness Monster popping out of the water. And often what you'll have when a patient tears their ACL is a pop. And so that's uh, what you're assessing for is a chain difference in the uh, two sides. One side should pop out when you do the Loch Ness test if the uh, ACL is uh, torn. ACL is what more or less locks the knee in place. So keep, have the patient lie back, and then we're going to grab uh, the femur with one side and the uh, tibia with the other, and, oh yeah, no movement there. Really, you got a little bit of pop, but you really shouldn't get a whole lot of movement. So this is a nice intact ACL. Let's try this one. Another nice intact. ACL. Loch Ness Monster is not jumping out of this guy. Okay, next is valgus testing. And for this, I want you to imagine that we have a pair of knees. Which I'm going to draw like this. This is one leg. This is the other. And in the middle, we have our knee. And now normally what keeps these knees in place is this guy here. And that's supposed to be an M because this is the uh, median collateral ligament. And that helps to keep the knees from going outward. And the ligament itself is on the inside of the knees. And the way to test to see whether it's intact is to uh, make an L here that goes outward and have the uh, feet go out while the knees go inward in the valgus position. You can draw this as Valgus going outward. I also like to think of the L being leave because that part goes outward and then it's the lower section that is tested. All right, now let's do varus testing. And for varus, this time we're going to imagine the knees here and here. And again, this time we're going to have on the outside an L. This time the L is for the lateral collateral ligament on the lateral side of the knees. And that acts as a brace that keeps the uh, knees from going inward in the as a varus direction or at least one keeps the feet from going inward um, this would be with the knees uh, clinically this would happen often when the knees buckle outward on their own if the lateral collateral ligament is broken and I also like to think for testing for the uh, 
uh, varus testing that uh, you're rushing in at the uh, with the uh, movement of the uh, feet. Now remember that with uh, so let's start with the valgus testing. Remember it's sort of like an L on the lower part. The L and the L valgus lower going outwards. And so keep the knee stable and move out this way. Lower part. That's valgus testing and this knee. It's really pretty darn stable. Of course what we're testing there is the uh, medial collateral ligament holding everything in place. We're going to do valgus testing on this one. Yeah, pretty even. A little bit, not a whole lot of excursion there. Good. And varus testing, of course, just the opposite. It goes inward. That's the lateral collateral ligament. And these knees are pretty good. All right, the next one to remember is the drawers. So there are two drawers, the anterior drawer and the posterior drawer. So remember both of these drawers, you want the knees at uh, 90 degrees of flexion. And uh, so that should be a right angle there, in theory. And uh, the anterior drawer is going to be like a drawer that opens inward. You pull it anteriorly, and that tests for the ACL. And the posterior drawer is a drawer that opens posteriorly and that of course tests for the PCL. Okay, today we're going to do, uh, not today, now we're going to do uh, the uh, anterior and posterior drawer testing. So remember, 90 degrees sit on their foot and anterior drawer ACL drawer opens anteriorly pulling out checking for excursion this drawer is shut posterior drawer PCL opens posteriorly this drawer too is shut okay the next test is the McMurray test which I like to think of as the click Murray test because as you go from flexion at the knee to extension at the knee one of the things that you're looking for besides pain of course is the click. Now the other thing about the McMurray is that it tests for the damage to the meniscus of the knee, the cartilage, specifically with the medial meniscus. You can think of the acronym MEL and that one is medial Externally rotate and lateral force. Because as you're taking the knee from uh, flexed to extended, when testing for the you test for the medial men meniscus by externally rotating the knee as you do so, and applying some lateral force or. Um, some a little bit of valgus stress on the knee as you extend it. And then the other acronym, the uh, converse to that is LIM, that the lateral meniscus is internally rotated, or tested for by internally rotating.
and applying medial for sort of a little bit of varus uh, stress as you go from flexion and clicking with the extension. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to do the uh, McMurray test, which I call the Click Murray test, because that's one of the things you're assessing for, um, which checks for meniscal damage. Um, remember that uh, the medial meniscus, the accurate, the uh, mnemonic for that is MEL, so we're going to take the... Uh, um, so for the medial meniscus, externally rotate and put a lateral or valgus force. I'm assessing for any clicks or snaps or, of course, patient pain, which I don't find here. And for the lateral meniscus, uh, the mnemonic is limb, internally rotate, and put a uh, medial or varus force. And you're looking for patient pain as well as for and I don't find any of that. So we have a very good McMurray with no signs of any meniscal damage. All right, next is the Apley test, also known as the Apley grind test. And uh, in this uh, test, you have the patient lie prone on their stomach, actually, and uh, you flex their uh, knee backwards to... Uh, 90 degrees and, uh, and here the think of the examiner who puts their own knee here and the examiner here is the apple and uh, what they're going to do well, is put vertical or sorry axial force Think of that as like a mortar and pestle grinding down uh, onto the knee from above and then twisting uh, while they uh, do so. So this is a, a compression of the uh, examiner's knee onto the patient's uh, uh, posterior thigh and then putting axial force internally and externally rotating and if it's painful then that's a positive aptly grind test which also like the uh, McMurray test for the meniscus. And you can think of this as grinding the apple. Okay, so the last test uh, we're going to do here is the Apley uh, test, also known as the Apley grind test. And what you're doing is this is also a meniscal test um, with the patient prone. We're going to be putting a downward axial force and uh, again uh, twisting the uh, uh, tibia and you may feel snap or pop and pain here in the meniscus. Um, you'll see it both some with uh, um, just with downward compression as well as some people put the uh, knee there as a distracting force. Uh, these are variants of the Apley test. Uh -oh.